Christmas. It is so wonderful to be here and to see all of you here. I am not going to uh, spend any time on the announcements other than to mention that there won't be any worship or Sunday school tomorrow. And also a reminder that beginning next Sunday, Baxter will have the 9 a.m. worship and Sarah in the 10.30. Are there any announcements that need to be brought forth other than that? Blessed is the luminous night, the advent of Christ, our light and our life. Glory to God forever and ever. The light of Christ is born anew this night as your heart. In the beginning, light shines in the darkness, loving, beautiful, good, giving birth to all creation, the center, the heart of unfolding life. The light graces all creation as God's presence. The light is the child of Mary and Joseph. The light is a Jewish mystic, sage, and prophet. The light is life in the midst of death. May Christ the light reveal to all who would see the wisdom and wonder of God's boundless love. Amen. We'll begin with two verses of I Am So Glad Each Christmas Eve.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Please stand as you're comfortable for the reading of the first portion of our Gospel. The story of the birth of Jesus from Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. We'll sing the first two verses of Boy in the Manger. Yeah, 
Uh, any of you? Yeah? So what do we know about, were you a shepherd? So what do we know about shepherds? You know, I told someone that I was a shepherd and they didn't believe me because they didn't know what a shepherd did. What do we know about shepherds? Yes? Yeah, yeah, they, they take care of the breeding of sheep and, and the care of sheep, that's right. You know anything else about shepherds? Yeah. What do you know? Ask, right? They get sick or they get sticks. Yeah, they get a stick, right? They get that long hook, candy cane looking deal that they walk around with. Yes. Yeah, they, they, they probably did, yeah. So, if we only knew about shepherds from Sunday school programs, we would probably picture people in terry cloth bathrobes, right, with dish towels tied around their head, carrying a crooked stick. But that crooked stick was one thing that they probably did have. Do you know what that's for? Tell me. Okay. Yeah, it's to catch the sheep. So if they needed to catch one sheep, like let's say one of the sheep had a, a sore foot and it was walking funny, or it, there was just something wrong with it, they could grab that sheep, put that stick around its neck, and grab it. And there's smaller ones that you can grab by the leg with, but they also had a couple other pieces of equipment. In this, in the 23rd Psalm, it says, um, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, thank you, they comfort me. So the staff is that deal with the hook on the end, but they also had something else that basically was a club. If I could have gotten into the place where I had it stored, I'd have brought a baseball bat tonight, because that would have been kind of like what the shepherds carried. Because you know what a shepherd's job was? Yes. To keep the sheep safe. So they were out, walk away from place to place, from grass to water, and grass to water. There wasn't very much grass, because it was a dry area. There wasn't very much water. And if a cougar or a lion or a wolf or something came, Guess what the shepherd had to do? Yes? Scare it off. Scare it off or kill it. And all they had was that crookedy stick, which wouldn't do any good, and a club, which they might have to use if they got close enough. Or maybe there was one shepherd that already got mentioned tonight, and his name was David. Remember David? He's in the Bible all over the place. What do you remember about David? <coughs> He was a king. David was one of the most important kings that ever was. But before he was a king, he was a shepherd. And one of the first things that he did was that he killed Goliath. Anybody know the story of David and Goliath? Yeah? had like this, this leather strap that he put a rock in and he swung it and then he had it so when it got going fast he could flick his wrist and that rock would fly and it hit Goliath right between the eyes took it right up so but yeah that's a nice story but uh, if there was a wolf coming at you how confident would you be with a piece of leather and a rock? Would you feel pretty safe? Would you feel pretty safe fighting a, a Lion with a bat? These shepherds were rough and tough men. They lived out in the wilderness. They slept on the ground. They killed wild animals with their bare hands and maybe a stick. Every day they did these things. They never probably got very good sleep because at night they had to wait to see if something was coming to get the sheep. So Shepherds were very, very much different than we might think of. Okay? Sheep are not very smart. And sheep go wherever other sheep go. And the 
shepherd had to keep that from happening. So Jesus is our shepherd. King David was a shepherd. And we're going to hear about some more shepherds pretty soon. So let's have a quick prayer, and then we will uh, hear the rest of the story. Lord, thank you for these children. Thank you for the energy that they bring. And just the, the sheer potential that they bring. And remind us that we all have untapped potential to use in your service. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And now all the shepherds are going to come into the school. So thank you. You can go back to your seats. In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is, he is pleased. We'll sing.
weather this year were commenting on how it didn't feel like Christmas, how something seemed to be missing. And now with the weather, the complaining is almost deafening, right? I can't get to this place. The person who is going to bring this item, which we can't live without, is not going to be here. All my presents didn't make it. That darn UPS man didn't come when the wind chill was 50 below. It is so easy for us, as spoiled and pampered as we are, those of us who have vehicles that start in this kind of weather, that's a remarkable thing that have homes that are insulated well enough that we can stay warm, that have furnaces that are reliable, that have clothing that is warm enough. We don't have to go very far back to a time when that was simply not the case, when the kind of weather that we are in the midst of experiencing was a life and death thing. Oh, I complain when I have to go out and do chores. Oh my goodness, it's so tough to go out and do the chores. Got the water tank heaters plugged in, and as long as the breaker didn't blow, that's all fine. The shed is keeping the wind off of everything, and it's not that big of a deal. And I think about my dad doing chores in this kind of weather. Going out and breaking the chain loose on the bottom of the feed wagon because if he didn't, of course, he'd have to unload the feed wagon by hand and break the chain loose on the feed wagon. And taking chunks of frozen silage out of the pile and shoveling snow out of the bunks. And I think of my grandpa doing chores in this kind of weather, and my great-grandparents, and all of the things that, that the people who built this church, all of the things that they did simply to survive that we take for granted. And we take so much for granted. It's hard to make us happy, really. Even if everybody came, even if we got every present that we had ever wanted, even if all of the courses of our favorite meals were on the table, we'd have upset stomachs because we ate too much. And we'd have extra garbage that we had to get rid of from all the presents, and we'd have to return some things and all the hardships. I worry that we have gotten so far from the essence of what it means to be human, that we live in this world of, this artificial world of media and comfort and all of that. that it's getting harder and harder to reach the meaning of Christmas. Man, it was a difficult thing to get out on the township road today. Good thing Norm drove by right before I left, because then I went through the drifts. But at least I don't have to walk 70 miles with a pregnant bride. And when I get there, my family, who I don't even know, but they're my family because that's why I had to go, they're going to be so rude as to not make room for my pregnant wife. They're going to say, sorry, the guest room is full. Guess you'll have to go out in the barn. Jesus came into a rough world, and Jesus was born of rough people in the sense that they scra scrambled and scraped to survive. The shepherds are laying there, watching their sheep, maybe half asleep,
probably one hand on something to get, take a swing at something if it shows up. And the angels appear. And if you think that was beautiful and glorious, think again. We have this picture of angels, this radiant, lovely beings, but every angel that ever appears says the same thing, do not be afraid. And the shepherds were afraid. And they were not people who were fearful people. They were people who killed wild animals with their bare hands, and they were afraid. Now these shepherds most likely were watching the sheep that were used for sacrifice at the temple. So these are very important sheep. In fact, the sheep were in every way more important than the shepherds. The sheep were meant to be, if they were perfect enough, to be offered as sacrifice, whereas the shepherds would not have been welcomed in polite society, much less in the temple. Their job was to keep those sheep safe. And now when we look at Psalm 23 and we say, the Lord is my shepherd, we can picture our Lord who isn't just wandering around with the sheep, but who's ready to go to battle for us, who's ready to subdue whatever evil comes near us. We can picture a Lord with calloused hands and dirty feet and a heart that is, oh, we got a, something on fire. Yeah, well, that's all right. Get that taken care of. much more like our ancestors than like us. He was like those ancestors that came from other places and started a new life, who risked everything to move forward. Jesus didn't live a life of comfort. Jesus laid down his life for the flock, and we are the flock. And when we lose sight of that, when we think of faith as coming to church, when we think of faith as getting what we want, we miss the point. Faith is found in the nitty gritty of life. Not when we're in our Sunday best. God meets us in the nitty gritty. Amen. from the New Zealand prayer book. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love to us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. In gratitude, in praise, may our hearts turn to receive the light of the luminous night. Guide us in the ways of laying our lives gratefully before you. We lift our voices to God. In the wisdom of Christ, light our path. You call us each by name. Teach us to serve all creatures of your sacred creation. Guide us toward unity, healing our divisions. We lift our voices to God. May the
wisdom of Christ light our path. The nations are yours, part of your wondrous body. May all leaders know they are called to care. May they heed your people's cries for release from senseless oppression. Guide us toward justice and peace, healing our deceit. We lift our voices to God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. We are yours. Guide our hearts and minds and bodies in the ways of wisdom, that we might hear and heed the pleas of friends among us who hunger, thirst, and face the cold nights. Guide us toward mercy, healing our fear. We lift our voices to God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. Strengthen all who suffer and those who care for them. Open our hearts to see your tender presence already within us. Guide us toward fullness, healing our blindness. We lift our voices to God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. We welcome all who have completed their earthly journey. You welcome all. Your peace is now their peace. Guide us into your heart, healing our soul. We lift our voices to God. May the wisdom of Christ light our path. In gratitude and praise, we invite you, your peace into our lives. We lift our voices to God. God of hope and promise, through your love, the promise of life enfolds our hearts. In your heart, we offer our lives in hope. And so, as the star of night eternally sings your praises, we lay in your open hands the thankful prayers of ourselves, our souls, our bodies. Amen. At this time, the ushers will receive the offering. <coughs>
between that and, and watching Tom Sheldon light his candle and almost light himself on fire. It's quite, it's quite a memorable cross. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, source of life and without end, we give thanks to you. You continually call all life into being, cradling your creation in compassion. You spread out the heavens like a tent and enclose the seas. You fill the world with wondrous creatures and know all things as truly good. You send your heavenly messengers of hope day and night, and with them we give glory to you. In the days of Simeon and Anna, you lean toward the earth. Your eternal spirit becomes known to us through your beloved. Born into the family of Mary and Joseph, Jesus is cradled beside the beasts and warmed by their breath. Here is your child, like all your children, woven into life by the Spirit and in need of compassion. Worldly rulers are troubled by your dawning reign, embodied in this child in whom the fullness of your Spirit is pleased to dwell. Born of your Spirit, full of your grace, radiant with your beauty. As your beloved servant, Jesus becomes empty of might upon the cross. As the risen, anointed one, Jesus is forever embraced by you as Christ, embodying your eternal mercy and restoring justice to all the earth, now and forever. And so, together we stand, rejoicing in all that you, all loving God, have done and continue to do for us. Holy God, as you visit us in the birth of Jesus, heal our blindness so that we may see your presence now, always within and among us, in these delightful creatures of bread and wine, holy food and holy drink. Help us to taste the banquet of heaven here on earth. We remember how Jesus takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body being given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, the beloved holds the cup of wine, blesses it, and gives it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the covenant in my blood, being poured out for you and for many, that you may know God always holds you in tender forgiveness. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, you shed your grace brighter than starlight on us, that our hearts may radiate your good tidings to all, and renew the weary world in your name. Emmanuel, God with us. Holy God, to you we give honor and glory in joy, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you're comfortable and join us in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break the bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God, 
all are invited to God's table. You may be seated. You'll be ushered to the front. I'll be just handing out the bread in the middle, and the wine will be available on both sides.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthens you and keeps you in his grace. Amen. God of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, God of Mary and Joseph, God of angels and shepherds, God of our beloved Jesus of Nazareth, you are the God of all the earth. Tonight you reveal to us again that all people are your beloved children and that all creatures are your handiwork. Let us never cease to tell the story of your boundless love in all that we say and do. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. shall be upon his shoulder. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. 